Man. Ford F-250 Explorer. This style of truck isn't profitable anymore, and, well, I know why, but I don't know why it has to be this way. Because this is the type of truck that I want. A simple truck. Single cab, no options. AC, okay, okay, give me air conditioning at least. Two-wheel drive, I don't need four. I have no delusions about off-roading. I only want an asphalt truck. Manual transmission, too. A truck that hauls, pulls, and isn't trying to intimidate anyone. And above all, priced reasonably. When did trucks become luxury items? $80,000 credit-ruining monstrosities that you'll get on the hook for for 10 years. A 10-year car loan because you got a job as a gopher for Jack Williams Tire and you got to fit in, but, but it's all right because Cousin Dieter said he can get you in with Rinaldi and Klein. Rinaldi and Klein, authentic New York excavation. You want a hole, we'll dig you a hole. We'll dig you a hole. What goes into it? Hey, that's up to you. These trucks represent a lost mentality in American automobiles. Trucks are an artless sort of vehicle known for known more for their practical use than their value as a driving experience. They're brutally simplistic as a haymaker in a bar fight, and this truck hovers around the apex of that simplicity. It's just a truck, no bells, no whistles, no size to compensate for the lack of technological refinement. It's just a truck that doesn't want you to think the drive doesn't matter. Of course I say that, but this was also very much a truck that wanted you to know how durable it was in comparison to the competition. I am dead ass. Go to YouTube right now. I, I mean, you're all already on YouTube, but open another YouTube and look up 1985 Ford pickup commercial. And what you get is a video of an F-150 towing a Dodge pickup while carrying a Chevy pickup in its bed. It's hilarious and absurd in a kid trying to bring in all the groceries in one trip kind of way. I'll bet the Chevy pickup didn't even have an engine or a transmission in it. But, but yet, all of it is meant to represent the durability of 80s engineering. It's refinement of the cliched notion that they don't make them like this anymore. They don't make them like this anymore. And maybe it's not a cliche. Maybe they really don't make them like this anymore. Maybe standards have changed to such a degree that they just can't. Hell, you have Ford diversifying its stock portfolio right now with the Bronco and the well-established Raptor. The Raptor, which seems to exist solely to give you the experience of driving a Hummer without the stigma of driving a Hummer. And then you have the modifications people perform on modern trucks to give them character to make them more interesting than they are off the factory line. Like your air ride suspension for that lowered look with enormous final boss rims or maybe some sort of lift kit with giant CrossFit gym tires poked way outside the body. And then they slap on decals with their Instagram handle and the hashtag for whatever crazy name they're given their truck. Names like Slob Knob Silverado. And then they wait for high fives and curious onlookers snapping pictures with their phones while he pretends not to notice. But inside, he's smiling the mile-wide grin of a guy whose girlfriend just got an IUD. It's hard to do anything in this truck without voiding the value it brings forward from 1984. It's not made to be the next in a long line of garage builds that boil down to an intake and wheel package. This is simplicity in its greatest quality. That isn't to say this truck doesn't have modifications, but let's not call them that. Let's call it inventive engineering. Here's the story. Dan's dad had an 89 F350 with a diesel, and he wanted something similar uh, to work on for himself. So he found this on Facebook Marketplace only to discover paperwork in the glove box related to the truck's original owner. Dan took the initiative to look up the man's name, only to discover the man had passed. However, Dan connected with the original owner's grandson over social media, and he went on to learn that Grandpa had installed a 200-gallon transfer tank in the back and disconnected the rear fuel tank and rerouted the lines to the transfer tank. So he could travel from Pennsylvania down to visit family in Florida on a single tank. When Grandpa passed, the truck was sold and the previous owner had it undercoated with rubberized lining. 
Now, that previous owner retired in Florida. His wife insisted he sell one of his cars, and it wasn't going to be the Corvette. So that's how Dan came into possession of a Vin Wiki story waiting to happen. Ford F-250 Explorer trim from 1984. Steering? Yeah, it's got steering. It's got so much steering, you'll do it all the time, even when you're not turning. Torque? Yeah, it's got torque. Okay, for real. You can go from no gear into first, second, and even third without even touching the skinny pedal. You shift this four-speed like you shift a deuce and a half. Just grip it and rip it. Don't, don't worry about trying to get gears. It's a four-speed. There's a gear there. Don't worry. Dan told me not to rev the IDI diesel faster than 3,000 RPM, which was difficult because there's no tachometer. One of the previous owners put in, I don't know, what is this? Digital boost tachometer from a dirt bike? Doesn't matter because it's mounted way down here and I can't see it. Oh, and this artificial horizon instrument here in the middle of the dash, this does nothing. Doesn't even house any warning lights. This is just a bunch of lines. If you had the factory tachometer, it would have gone here. Dan said, just listen to the engine. And when the IDI diesel goes from lazy sounding to angry sounding, that means you're revving it too much. Speaking of sound. Sounds like an old bus. This truck sounds like an old school bus. And it oughta, because this is the same engine. The IDI diesel was used in school buses in the 1980s and early 1990s. This sound was the opening theme song to Soggy Sneakers on Concrete, Chapter End Questions, Morning Bells, Morning Announcements, and the Limitless Possibilities of Recess. Sometimes the bus had a radio and you could hear commercials from Rinaldi and Klein, you're paying with a check, eh? You gotta make it out to my mother. People wanna know, hey, Rinaldi and Klein, are you fully bonded and licensed? Who wants to know? I was fully bonded and licensed by your mother last night. How about that? Ford F-250 pickup. For the person who judges the quality of a restaurant's food by how long it takes the food to show up, are you looking for excavation from two guys who use the same generic accent to represent all five boroughs? Hey! Rinaldi and Klein! Rinaldi and Klein! Rinaldi and Klein! Hey! hey, hey we, we got, got a van. van! The engine. This is the 6.9 liter non-turbo diesel V8 known as the International Harvester IDI. IDI stands for indirect injection. It makes 190 horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque. The IDI was a four-stroke, eight-cylinder diesel used for international harvester trucks, F-series pickups, and E-series vans from 1983 to 1994. And yes, international school buses. It uses a mechanical injection pump with indirect ignition, which is a process where the diesel fuel is not directly injected into the combustion chamber, but delivered by a fuel injector just before the intake valve. While direct injection gets you greater power through precise fuel delivery, uh, it can also lead to issues like carbon accumulating on the intake valves. It's the same thing that we may see soon in uh, direct gasoline injected engines. But the theory goes that indirect injection keeps fuel spraying on the intake valves for what's supposedly an improved fuel-air mixture and lubrication. Uh, it's basically the pull-out method of fuel injection. This transmission is a four-speed T19 Borg Warner transmission, although there is debate over whether it's a proper four-speed or simply a three-speed with a low, low first gear. Regardless, this is a transmission made for towing. Now, there are turbo kits for the IDI diesel, but it's hard to imagine that the extra power doesn't throw everything else wildly out of proportion. It's a surprisingly cruisable truck, ideal for 80s cassettes and forested back roads. It's so unmistakably 80s, but not city 80s or Crockett and Tubbs 80s. No, this is rural 80s, pool 80s, Guns N' Roses 80s. The 80s that are still 1975, the Midwest 80s, Randy Travis 80s, Roadhead Through the Zipper 80s. Roadhead Through the Zipper 80s. Back to why there are no simple trucks. Because manufacturers and dealers make their money on trims, options, and special editions. 
Wait, no, that doesn't work because that applies to cars as well. Okay. Somewhere between the second generation Dodge Ram in 1994 and the 2003 F-150 Harley-Davidson edition, trucks went from general utility vehicles to steroids in pride. You're not going to win without them. By 2007, every man was hooked. And one year later, when the global financial crisis hit, three-car families became two-car families, thanks in part to cash for clunkers. Fathers got $3,500 for their ragged Dodge Neons, and while they're at the dealership, why not trade in their single-cab F-150 for a quad-cab Duramax? I can still haul kids around and then show them all at Rinaldi and Klein, serving the five boroughs, northern New Jersey, and eastern Pennsylvania. We are here for you. Just come to Louis' shop and ask for me. I'll give you a call back. The number's going to be different every single time, but don't worry. I'll be inclined. Family excavation will fill your home. So trucks in 2020 have become a bubblicious flavor menagerie of cod pieces, family cars, and utility vehicles. And the finance department is hooked on the fat margins that these trucks generate. So basic, small margin pickups, I don't know if they're coming back. This truck isn't perfect, of course. These two-wheel drive F-250s all came with independent front suspension, and it's known for front-end issues related to that independent front suspension, since it can be difficult to keep everything aligned, especially if this is going to be a work truck, you're going to bash it around, you're better off with a solid front axle. I think we've been ignoring that this truck says Explorer. Some people don't know that... Explorer used to be a mid-tier trim level. The best one is supposedly this. This is the D package. Yeah, it is. The Explorer D trim gets stuff like tinted glass. This is tinted glass. I don't know how they're getting that, but apparently this is the original glass and they're saying this is tinted. A tilt steering wheel, XLT door trim panel, Explorer tape stripe, Explorer seat trim, an auxiliary fuel tank, yeah, this is one of these dual fuel tank trucks where you got to fill one fuel tank and then you, you, know, you got to put the cap on, fill up the other one. Air conditioning, color keyed seat belts, an XL instrument panel. Apparently you still don't get a tack. It's all just kind of dress up. It's an 80s truck of hints of, of modern tech without actually having any modern tech. Very much in line with the type of truck that will unlock the I had these back in the day conversation outside rudders on 61. Because Dan was saying, whenever he drives this truck, old men in denim overalls materialize out of the asphalt. And they got stories. Because these, these things were made for passing down, for keeping in the family until it no longer makes financial sense to do so. As if the older man is looking to younger generations for some sort of sign that his way of life will continue. Whether it's a 1980s truck or post-war values, the elders of today are finding themselves living in a world growing more and more alien and unknowable. They're living in a world where youth no longer respect their elders by virtue of them just having lived longer. I mean, that's what they were expecting would happen. But no, this is a different world now. An elder needs to aspire to be worthy of respect. And that's a reality that reads unfair to the August mind. But a truck like this is an elder that did do the work and is still approachable and knowable and listens to you today. And you can, like this IDI diesel, listen to it. And this is worthy of respect. And there's no one is trust no more. Everything is seen to change. Take me to the olden days with a one nine then an eight. Modern trucks can tow much more. That's not what I need today. All I need's a classic day with a one nine then an eight.